tonight we have an action-packed episode for you. Andrew, what's on the agenda? <laughs> well, Steve. <laughs> well, I'm trying to do like a cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, Steve. no, Wells, Steve. We're going to talk uh, about Wells. Wells, yeah, and how you should treat them when they're terrain God. on your. We just lost so many subscribers. Good. I'm sorry. We do have actual MESBG content. Oh. But also wells. Wells. We do have a terrain piece that's a well that has had some conversation about how you treat it exactly. It Could the right? watcher of the water come up out of it? <laughs> well. Well. Stay tuned. I mean, the conversation is deep and wet. Liquid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speaking of deep and wet. Let's reach from the well of topics and pull out the veto system. Let's pull from the well. <laughs> oh my uh, god. Should I I'm gonna cut all that. Alright. The veto system. The veto no, system. I'm not gonna cut it. No, it's I'm way There's too just lazy. no clean spot. The veto system. Let's keep going. Yeah. No break. <clears throat> Can't cut. Okay. The veto system. Yep. Tonight we're gonna talk about is the veto system breaking the Middle Earth strategy battle game? Shock and horror. I will say Literally today in my car, I listened to the latest episode of Int Moot, and he's also talking about this, so I was like, oh man, but we already did extensive preparation for this conversation, so we're just going to also weigh in, because it's the internet, and we have opinions on YouTube, which I, again, is fairly unheard of, I think, in these days. Breaking new ground. That's right. To dig new wells. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. What a callback. To get off the well thing. Okay. Hey, get off the well thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. Okay. Fine. <laughs> uh, okay, so the veto system. A lot of tournaments here, of course. It's kind of taken the tournament scene by storm. I believe it started in Australia. Um, and it's generally, I think, overall a pretty cool thing. Uh, but we're going to just talk about... Obviously, we don't think it's a bad thing. Right? If it was a bad thing, no one would be doing it. I don't know if that's worth mentioning. Yeah, two two kind of ways of vetoing. We don't think it's a bad thing, but we do think there is a lot of trade-offs that Mm -hmm. I think are worth thinking about and having conversations about. Um, So first of all, what is a veto system? When you go to a tournament, there's a number of ways that you're going to figure out what scenario you play. And as you know, in this game, your scenario, your army list, the terrain, that determines 100% how the game's going to play out, right? And there's, there, there frankly is a lot of luck there and a lot of thought that has to go into your list building to account for situations that reasonably could come up. So what are the, what are the different types of veto or at least how scenarios are decided at tournaments? Yeah, so, well, one option, of course, for a scenario decision is there's a scenario and you play it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Right. Oh, where, some, the, where the TO has yep. said. And sometimes they'll make sure they don't do the same pool twice. Right. Uh, but other than that, it's, you don't know what you're going to get. And That's what's actually recommended in the match yep. play guide, is that the TO picks a scenario within a pool, but that the pools are designed so that you're not doing multiple scenarios from the same pool. Yeah. So that armies can, can spread. So that is kind of the quote-unquote official guidance and likely how it's mostly been done. Although we've seen some other ways, too, like just randomly rolling. Yeah, yeah. But go ahead. Yeah, and then there's there's two that we are familiar with, at least, systems of vetoing, which is veto by pool, which means you're assigned a pool mm-hmm. and you and your opponent uh, each choose which one to veto and right. whichever one is left is the one that gets played. Right. And then there's three random or hand-picked scenarios are chosen, and then mm-hmm. you, you do the same thing. You, you and your opponent veto, and, and you're left with the remaining ones. So. Right. I think generally the veto within the pool is probably more common, although yep. we've played where it's yep. like, here's three totally unrelated scenarios, and you veto from that. Yep. Um, so let me, let's just start with our opinions. First of all, I, I'm happy no matter what the situation is, but I do like to know ahead of time. Yeah, definitely. Because I want to think about, okay, well, if we if it's veto by pool, then I know I'll never have to play X, Y, Z, because I can always veto that. Yeah. Whereas if it's veto across, you're like, I don't know. You could wind up in a situation where all three of your worst yeah. are up there. So I, I just like knowing ahead of time. But besides that, I'll tell you right now, it has no impact on my opinion going into, or generally my opinion of during a tournament. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. Like, you just have to know, and you have... You have to know if it's veto because you tailor your list to. If it's not veto, you might build your list differently, which we'll, I'm you, sure we'll you get will into. You will and yeah, should, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so let's let's start talking about trade offs. You know, the game is designed without a veto system in mind, and I do think there is a 
um, non quantitative balance balancing instrument in that mm -hmm. meaning scenarios like a uh, contest of champions are supposed to go for the bears they're supposed to be really good for the bears and simultaneously other scenarios like uh, I'm just thinking out loud uh one where you're in, in, in the, quarters, in the quarters with as many, yeah, is bad for the yeah. bears generally, right? Because they've yeah. got fewer models and it's harder for them to be everywhere. I, I'm, I'm speaking kind of in, gen, in generalities here. So by including no ability to veto, it does make some lists, I think, simultaneously less and more attractive. There's, yep. there's more of a trade-off. For instance, it, I'm just using the bears as an example. I would probably be more inclined to play them with veto because yes, i know absolutely. i can get rid of what the absolute worst thing is for right you. because there's probably only three or four scenarios yeah. that they really don't like yeah. and they excel in a lot of others whereas if it's like hey this could be anything i'm like okay well there's like you know four or five scenarios that i just don't want to face with this army yep. and so i'm gonna i'm gonna change my mind a great example too i think is lothlorien and like galadriel being your leader if you run the risk of playing contest of champions She's going to really, really struggle in yep. that in that situation. But if there's veto, whether it's, it's within pool or not, you know, okay, well, I can mitigate her weaknesses. So uh, to me, that's really all it boils down to is that it, it, it causes some differing approaches to list building. And I think it elevates some lists and squashes others. Yep. Yeah, it changes the balance of the game. Right. I mean, the yeah, the balance of certain armies is different and depending right. on the the pool or scenario selection. Right. Which is neither a bad nor a yeah. good thing in my opinion. I think that's what we always come down right. to. Both yeah. are fine. I just might yeah. choose a different list. And yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of factors that go into a game and, and balance. I think terrain is a great example. Yeah. There is some guidance in the rules on how to play terrain. It should be two thirds of the board, roughly coverage with terrain. But in general, a super light board is going to really favor army A, who's yeah. really shooty. Yep. And it's going to really you know, penalize army C, right? So there's there's all these factors that come into this, and this is kind of just one additional element yeah. to, to take into account as you go into it. Um, but the reason we wanted to talk about this is because there is some kind of conversation going on about the veto system. There's some, some general conversation where I think people are starting to get a little tired of it. And I got to say, even though I'm happy with anything, I think I'm kind of there. And here's why. I haven't played Contest of Champions <laughs> I haven't played Seize the Prize, and I haven't played Heirlooms of Ages Past in probably 18 months. Because those are the first to get knocked out. And they're not the worst scenarios, but generally there's an imbalance there. Yeah. Because one person has an army that's just better for those, and you're like, I'm out. I'm, yeah. we're, we're killing that. And I think that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, though interestingly, I've played Contest and Heirlooms in the last... Really? The last tournament. I think I played both. You uh, did? I know I played Heirlooms. I'm pretty sure I played Contest. I know I've played it fairly recently. Yeah, Heirlooms maybe gets played yeah. a little more yeah. frequently. Reluctantly, it, but I, yeah. Yeah, I did play it. Its yeah. pool has some other funky ones, so I yeah. can see Heirlooms. Like, it's Hold Ground, which could be bad. So yeah, maybe Heirlooms was a bad example, but but seize the prize. Yeah, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't even think about it. They, yeah. They're just like, oh, I'm obviously getting to seize the prize. I also think people don't think long enough about Contest as Champions, because yeah. I think people think it's worse for them than it is sometimes right I, I, yeah i feel like i've i don't remember which tournament but the, the opponent was like oh i gotta get rid of contest of champions and i was like thank you because yeah that, that would have been great for no, you i had a i had a similar situation too yeah where you're just like i don't know i feel like uh you might actually if you were super clever about how you line things up yeah i think really he was he out. was magic heavy and i had a, a big beefy hero who was scary but he was right. like you could just tie him up you the just, entire you game. just transfix <laughs> yeah. him transfix him <laughs> like, yeah i was so, thinking him yeah so I, that to me is the one bummer is yeah. that I really don't honestly hate any of the scenarios, even though some of them could use a tweak, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. We're just going to share our opinions on how we think we might fix three of the most maligned scenarios, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but, but that's the bummer to me is like, I go into a tournament, we roll for pool and one way or another, I'm like, well, I know we're not going to do contest of champions yeah. because someone is going to have the edge and either I'm going to kill it or my opponent's going to kill it. And it's like, okay, well, we yeah. might as well just roll a die and see who gets to pick which one we play here. Cause we're not doing that. We're not doing seize the prize. Right. And I've actually had some really memorable games. I like seize the prize. The prize. Uh, I like it too. Yeah. I like it too. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the counterpoint though. Yeah. What? What it fixes, I think, is MESBG is already a pretty dicey game. Yeah. So if you're mm -hmm. rolling a die to choose which scenario, yeah. 
and you get the one that heavily heavily disfavors yep. you. It's like, oh well, oh, cool, I lost from the start, uh, and yeah, which is a bummer. But right, it's an error in your list building. But even if you try to make a well-rounded list, there's always gonna be something that's bad for yeah. you. Some so. combination of scenario, opponent, and terrain. Yep, those are the three factors going into every game. Yep, and you know, two of those you have no control over, mm-hmm. and with veto, you gain some control over one of those factors. The yep. other two you still can't touch. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it like I said, it's it's a double edged sword. Mm-hmm. I think lately we've done a lot with veto. Yeah, I, it's been a long time since we haven't done veto. I think I was trying to remember, and I think the tournament we the escalation tournament we did in North Carolina was not veto. I think they announced this the scenario. Is that right? No, no, no. It must have been veto no, too. Don't. That's interesting because I played contest of champions there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the point stands. Yeah. I, I love it, and I'm also okay with people like, not doing it. I'd be happy if three out of four tournaments was were veto, and yeah. every once in a while we got one that wasn't. Just you know, it's yeah, different. yeah. Maybe the perfect, the golden ratio would be like one that's roll randomly veto, two that are veto by pool, and one that's like I just rolled and assigned. Yeah, you know that could even be the pool thing. Yeah. So yeah, veto's fine. Um, it's cool. We do it on the channel primarily. You know, I, I did notice we don't tend to talk about what we vetoed. Sometimes we do, but I think we often forget because that is an interesting part of the discussion. Yeah, it's I like, think we maybe mention it, but we don't say yeah, why or anything. Yeah, because yeah, the game's usually already in flight yeah. uh, by the time you're vetoing because you're looking at the board and thinking, okay, what are we going to do? So um, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, I, I would like to see a little bit taking the foot off the gas of the veto system. Yep. If only because... I want to go into a scenario and be like, oh my god, how am I going to do, mm-hmm. how am I going to do seize the prize here? Yeah. You know? Yeah, but, and I think a lot of them look bad from a zoomed out view when you're thinking about it and your opponent. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is going to be horrible. But a lot of times it's not nearly as bad as you think, and there's some yeah. answer for it. I agree. I totally agree with that. And there's, there's something can be done. And if there's one thing we've learned about MESBG is it's never over till it's over. Yeah. How many times have we... I, probably more than you, been like, well, I mean, that's it. And then the next turn comes like, oh, yeah, actually, I just won. Yep. <laughs> like, which is the worst. I hate that about myself, man, and I'm trying to not do that, but I do. Yeah. And, you know, it, it always, yeah, yeah. There's, you it always know. surprises you. So let's talk a little bit about the scenarios and what we might do to fix them. And here's the three I was thinking about we could talk about mm-hmm. today, but t- you tell me if there's one that you're like, no, I hate this one even more. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I don't hate them, but they're kind of maligned by the community. The first, I think, is Seize the Prize. That one is generally sort of bleh for a lot of people. Maybe even more so than that is Heirlooms. Mm-hmm. And then I don't think it's much maligned. I just think it's if it's always vetoed, it means there's a problem. I think that's maybe Contest of Champions. Yeah. Was there another one you were thinking about instead of Contest? A lot of people don't like Storm the Camp. Yes. Let's talk about Storm the Camp. Yeah. That, one's, that one's rough. Yeah. I... I don't hate that one outside of tournament settings, but in yeah. a tournament setting, the time, yeah. you just don't have it's enough time. too long of a trip. It really is. So, all right, let's talk about what we would do to fix those, and, and we'll just keep this brief, but we would love to hear from you in the comments what you think about these ideas, what ideas you have. I mean, it's just a conversation. We can't actually change anything here, obviously, right, until we start running tournaments. Yeah. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... Um, you know, we're, it, we're this is just a discussion. It's friendly discussion. We're just we're just chi chon over here having yeah. a good time. And I think the usual disclaimer of we think this game is great. There are so few problems with right. it. So we're just like, yeah, a couple things we might have or some people have gripes about. Let's talk about it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, that's right. And even these problems, I'm like, I still like these yeah. scenarios. Just all right, fine. All, except for one, I like these we, scenarios. All right, let's start with that one. Which is the one you really I don't like? I hate heirlooms of ages. Okay, Pass. I yeah. think it's bad. Heirlooms is probably my least favorite as well. And we've talked about this numerous times. Yeah. There's a couple of easy fixes for this. Well, let's, I guess let's talk about the problem. Yeah. yeah. How it usually plays out. Right. Which is. You, you you explain what I haven't played it. Sure, yeah, sure. normally. <laughs> so, uh, reminder about heirlooms: there's six objectives on the board, and when an infantry figure lands on one of those objectives, you roll a die. On a six, it is the heirloom that you can then pick up and try to possess for scoring at the end of the game. On any other result, it's gone, and you do that for five of the objectives. But the final objective, no matter what, is the heirloom. Yeah. 
which is almost pretty cool. And I've, I've run the odds a couple times. Like, what are the odds of rolling a six on those five dice? And it's, it's really pretty high yeah. a- across those five dice. But the problem is, uh, again, maybe not the problem. The reality is the game gets played very differently. It's not a scramble for objectives. It's a game of chicken. Typically, you're yeah. down to two objectives left. Yeah. And you're like, I'm not going to touch this right. until I know I could grab that one. Yeah. Or my opponent can't grab that one. And then I'll scramble to try to get both. Yeah. And so the game just doesn't play the way it feels like it was intended, which right. is like, we're scrambling, scrambling to, to get thing. it because you think it could be this one, right. but really you're looking at it thinking, I know odds are it is not this one. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> if I touch it. Right. You're like, well, there's a five and six chance that this is, there's an 85, 84% chance that this is not the one. Yeah. So am I just going to get rid of it or am I going to hold it? Like, it's just, it's a, it's a different feeling scenario than I think the way it reads. Yeah. Which is again is fine. I mean, I've still had a fun time with the scenario. Yeah. On the other hand, it is one of those like ah, my opponent rolled a six on their first thing, yeah. and my army and is can nowhere yeah. near them. Yeah, and that's I, that just there's nothing I can do about yeah. that. But I don't think there's much way to get rid of that. So right. what what would we do to resolve the scenario? Yeah. I know I've got some ideas, and I think you've got some ideas too. So I think the implementation is up for you know there are a couple ways to do it, but the reality should in my opinion, be that each heirloom has an increasing chance of it being the one. Right. Because in reality, you know, there are four left. Really, there's a one in four chance right. that, that the one you pick remaining. should be it. Yep. But it's not. It's one yep. in six still every single time, even when there are two left. Right. Which I think if it increased every time, then you would really be trying to get them. You still might delay right. hitting the first one because it's got the lowest chance of Success. I mean, really, you want to wait till your opponent hits one, right. then you hit one. And when there's chance. two left, it's still a 50 50. Yeah. So the end result might still be this yeah. is a standoff to grab the last one. So, but at least it feels like there's more of a chance to get yeah. it before that final face off. Yeah. Right. I, I think that's part of it. We've talked about it'd be really cool if you could. You know, have double sided objectives that and one of the them dream, was face I think, down. Yeah. I, unfortunately, not that we wouldn't trust anyone. That's hard to pull off in a yeah, tournament. Yeah, you go to the you bathroom. And yeah, and again, not that I would think anyone, but even if it's like, oh, I accidentally bumped it and saw it. Yeah. Like stuff like that, you just kind of can't do in a tournament. The other thing is to, to yeah, have an, uh, an equivalent chance. So, okay, there's five less. So I'm rolling the equivalent of a D5 yeah. to see if I, I get the, the heirloom. There's one other thing I've thought about fixing with that one, and that is moving them a little bit more centrally because it's also um maelstrom and so it really sucks to be like well there's one over here and i had one more band show up here everything else is over there and oh that's the one right which just kind of yeah the game's over there's no game now i mean that's not strictly true you do have to hold it and it does transfix the person holding it on the roll of a one so it's just very dicey but um i think to me if if it if it had more distance that it had to be from the table edge you know, so yeah. they're more centrally yeah. located. They'll, they'll be closer together, but I think that will generate more likely a fight, even if you're going to that, that face-off phase where yeah. you're both sitting there staring each other down, but those objectives hypothetically should be a little closer. Yeah. That, that to me, those are the two fixes for that scenario. Yeah. And again, I don't hate the scenario. I think it's pretty fun sometimes, but it also has led to some of the least fun games I've ever had. Yeah. I mean, yeah, when I played it in Raleigh, it, yeah, it wasn't fun. I, yeah. I grabbed it. Uh, there was no chance he was ever going to get it. Yeah. And th- there's gamey stuff uh, in this game. Like, you know, I want to get to Broken, so I'm deliberately being... Uh, the, my most frequent experiences of that have been in heirlooms. Because someone picks it up and they're like, now I want yep. to die to end this game. I think that ends on quartered, and that's So that's I'm what throwing I yeah. stuff at you. And conversely, I don't want to kill you, so yeah. I'm only shielding across the board and trying to maneuver... Uh, so yeah. yeah, I remember my game. I was purposely not doing my courage checks with my heroes first, so that my warriors would would flee. Flee. And right. It's just like this isn't. Yeah. 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 So so the structure of the scenario kind of makes it fall short. But anyways, what do you think? Tell us about heirlooms. Tell us about your experiences. What would you do to fix it, or would you just leave it alone? Let's go on to the next one. I think this is an easy one for me. Seize the prize. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so close to cool because it's basically a game of rugby. Yeah. And I will say this is one of those that. Every time I've played it in a tournament, I felt prepared for it. Mm-hmm. If I'm going into a veto tournament, I'm like not. I'm like, okay, well, someone's going to get rid of that. But if I'm going into another tournament, I'm like, well, I'm definitely taking Glorfindel or something, so I could do it even without having to march. Yeah. Or no, I got to have march to to get to this thing. Um, 
So I I really do not hate this mission. I don't either. But I have had the scenario where someone else gets to it, and then you're fighting in the middle, and they're kind of passing it backwards. Yeah. But I've also had as just as many super fun games with it. So I was thinking about this in the car, and I was like, what would I what would I do to make this scenario? a little more balanced and palatable. And I actually think what I would do is make it three prizes instead of just one. And they would be far enough apart to where one march wouldn't be able to get you on both. Or maybe could get you on two. Maybe they're 12 inches apart. And make the center one still worth more points, but not as huge of a swing. So you could hypothetically grab the other two, your opponent grab one, and then it comes down to breaking. Because the the big problem with that scenario is the points are super swingy. Which, by the way, that's one thing I wanted to mention about the veto system. Some scenarios are more VP swingy than others. If if you, at table three, are playing Storm the Camp, and I'm playing Seize the Prize at my table, the likelihood of one of us going 12-0 is way higher than you going 3-3. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, to me, is, is another thing, because VPs are the first tiebreaker. Yeah. After win loss. And yeah. so, you know, when you're not all playing the same scenario, the scenarios just have a much different VP spread. I would kill to have data about games played and the average scenario, uh, VPs. Yeah. I would love to see that because yeah. I, you, you can look at them and figure out probably. Yeah. So anyway, so back to seize the prize. I think you could spread those points out a little bit. There's yeah. one big spike that can frankly come down to that first roll. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you're going to do the move, you're going to do the march. Did you get the the prize? If so, you probably have an 85% chance of winning that game on the first die roll of the game. Yeah. That's the problem with it. But if there's three of those things, okay. They're they're a little more spread out. Yeah. You can't cover that much frontage. Your opponent's going to grab one. You know, you're going to maybe get one and fight over one. Yeah. Yeah. That helps. I think the issue, the core issue with it is it favors one attribute of a list, which is speed. So right. if you're one of the dwarf factions that has no access to cavalry, like yeah. even if even if there are three, right. like it's auto lose, which, which is, again is okay in some ways because well that's supposed to be the dwarf's weakness. Yeah. They're super high defense. But in a non veto world, it's like should you auto lose just because like I agree. a I, faction is course. totally negated on a I, I on one definitely of their agree. Next I definitely games. agree. Yeah. Yeah. But if there's three, it's unlikely you're going to have multiple marching heroes to get access to all three. But sure, you could, yeah. but that's no different than getting access to the one anyway. If your list is perfect for yeah. that. It's a, it's a little better. still doesn't necessarily yeah. make it, I feel like, yeah, I think in a no-veto world, that's one of the bummer. And I haven't hadn't really even had that opinion until I just thought about it. But like in a yeah. no-veto world, that might be one of the worst mm-hmm. scenarios for like for a bad time, army. yeah, yeah, army of Thror, uh, yeah, Khazad Doom, like no cavalry, yeah. I mean, March doesn't even get them close. Yeah, March gets yeah. you eight inches. You're still like a world away. Yeah, <laughs> and the scenarios are always going to favor somebody. I just right. Maybe there shouldn't be one that's so focused on like yeah. speed, but maybe there should. I don't I, know. I don't feel that bad about it, but yeah. I, I agree it's definitely a thing, and it's something where you're like, okay, if I'm taking Khazad Doom, I better think about. This not being veto, what do I do if this scenario comes up? Yeah. The other thing I've heard people talk about, and I'd be interested to think through the implications here, is to make the object, instead of a light object, a heavy object. Mm -hmm. Because then you can't hand it off to a rider. Yeah. And the people carrying it are moving slow. It might take two models to carry it even. Um, That could be something, that could be a kind of cool change. Because right now the play is get it to a a horse, get it to a cavalry model and get them out of here. But heavy, heavy objects can't be carried. You could also add the, um, the transfix thing from heirlooms, which is again another opportunity to be like, hey, if you're running that one cavalry, risky around the edge to try to get off my board edge, there's a chance that that cavalry just looks at the shiny and, you know, I I think those are things that could be considered. I'm not suggesting they're like an obvious fix, but, that's something that you could you could think about. Yeah, and I guess, you know, at least you have to get off your opponent's board edge. So dwarves right. could theoretically have, you know, a lot of ranged stuff to try and stop you, but it's, yeah. it's a it's a uphill battle. <laughs> I have I, I used to run Glorfindel all the time, as you remember, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure I've won that scenario oh, three yeah, times with it, Glorfindel. Yeah. Like at least three times. Someone the a knight runs up, grabs it next turn, is like, here you go, and Glorfindel's like, Alright, see y'all. Yeah. I'm or out. imagine having Gwai here or something. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's the scenario. Yeah. And the last one, which I definitely remember what we were gonna talk well, about. Well we considered is... contest of champions. 
but that's there not was what an we said. Storm the camp. <laughs> Storm the camp. Yeah, this one's hard to fix, and I I think I don't know. I think to me the the easy fix is the camp is still that back 12 inch radius corner, but the armies start much further forward. Yeah, because starting opposing quarters, I did the math one time. Let's see, a squared plus b squared. We got. Four feet, A squared plus B squared. Steam so we're so 32. 32 feet. So what's the what's the square root of 32? Uh, like it's going to be like point five something. point something. And then you subtract two feet. You've got like almost four feet to cross. Yeah. It's like it's probably three and a half feet before you're even able to possibly touch your opponent's camp, not accounting for terrain. Yeah. So every game I've played, it's like seven turns or something before you're even there. And I've again, never played a game of Storm the Camp where someone got into the other really? person's camp. Really? I have, but it's rare. Yeah, and, I also rarely play it. But. The one time I did, I was playing Adam, and he was running um, his scouts with drums and marches. That'll do it. So his scouts were going like 14 inches yeah. on a turn. And he got to my camp, but I still was able to just hold him back. Yeah. But... um. That's what I think I would do. Let the army start much further forward, but keep the camp the same size. Because then if you're like, well, I'm going to be hyper-aggressive, you can deploy all the way forward. Yeah. And then the distance between engagements is not three and a half feet yeah. minimum. Yeah. And that, to me, maybe even just solves it right there. Yeah. Um, Though I guess think? the distance moved is uh, it's still more than Reconnoiter, but you're coming on the board from Reconnoiter. So I'm just thinking about like another long travel yeah. camp, but I love Re Reconnoiter. I actually so. really like yeah. Reconnoiter, too. That's another one that I think people are a little on the fence on, but I, th I think it's a great scenario, especially since we read the clarifications. Where like models that are off don't count for yeah right yeah for, that for, that to yeah. me you can't just rush off half your army and be like and I'm broken yeah. and I'm and and I'm quartered or whatever yeah it's like okay you really got to think about that yeah. scenario um, yeah I think Storm the Camp has the potential to be really cool and it also feels like a a very historically appropriate scenario where you're like, that is a fixed position and we are assaulting yeah. it right now. It's cool conceptually, yeah. It is cool conceptually. And again, I like it outside of tournament play. Mm -hmm. If we're like, cool, we've got five hours, yeah. that's how long that freaking scenario takes. Yep. And that's why in tournaments, with time being a thing, it's so often a draw. Yeah. And why I will heavily consider vetoing it in a tournament, just because I know even if I win, it might be two VPs. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. So... All right. Anything else? Closing thoughts? I feel like we've explored everything we wanted to talk about. Yeah. Good game. Couple, couple little fixes. I don't. Will they fix them? Probably not. No. Uh, it's no. been around for a long time, and it's not. It's not ruining the game. It's uh, totally not ruining the game. But honestly, I was thinking about this because if we run tournaments, there's nothing to stop us from saying, "Hey, we're making tweaks to these three scenarios, and we're going to test them here." Yeah. And, and I think as long as you're upfront about that, yeah. now, other tournaments have done it. There's a lot of tweaks to scenarios out there that people have done. Um, I think that'd be fun. I yep. think it'd be a cool. I mean, I'm all about a change of pace. I got no problems with people monkeying with whatever the game. I like, you know, hey, no named heroes, all that stuff. I love it's fun, yeah. Because constraint adds creativity yep. to me, and so I, I bring it on. Bring me new scenarios, weird tournament constraints. Give me veto system. Don't give me veto system. I'm here for all of it, as long as everyone is very well aware of what's going on ahead of time. That's half the fun for me. Yep. Cool. Well. That's it, I think. Yeah. <sighs> I need a drink after this. <sighs> Me too. Two as often as I can. Mm -hmm. Spare. Two drinks. So, yeah. As often as I can. That's what I was them. going for. <laughs> yeah. I gotcha. Nailed it. All right. Hey, thanks everyone for joining us. I hope you've had a good time. Uh, again, we would truly love to hear what you have to say about this stuff. So sound off in the comments and we, we try to respond to every single comment. And uh, yeah, we really enjoy the conversation and everyone's support so far. So see you out there, y'all. You could start a trend. It could be like everyone. At, like how Nelly had a band-aid. Yeah, band -aid. <laughs> everyone shows up to Middle Earth tournaments with. <laughs> Blood strong. Yeah, it really doesn't look bad. Thanks. <laughs> you can't even notice it. <laughs> it should. Uh, every video, I should get more grievous. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, just so like I need to start leper. with a band-aid. Yeah. <laughs> and then get my band-aid like, gradually gets Everything bigger. Everything just falls like, like your face is around. melting. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see how that looks. All right, let's see how this did.